Hey guys, so today we'll go over what I consider to be my top budget filming gear for YouTubers. And I know it's not always easy to know what to buy when you're starting out on YouTube. So I really think the following items will be great for any YouTuber, especially if you're on the budget. So without waiting any further, let's check these items. So first thing on the list is the Aperture Amaron ALM9, which is an LED light that sells for about $45. So you get a lot of light in a small package. It's super thin and there's a built-in battery. It charges over a micro USB cable and it's super easy to carry around. So you can buy a bunch if you need and pack them in a bag. It also comes with filters and a carrying case. And it's actually really great to showcase a specific product. And with great lighting, you can actually lower your ISO, which is the sensitivity of your camera sensor and you will get a better image overall. The only downside is that the battery doesn't last very long. So to cover that area, I've got the good folks over at Blitzwolf to send over a battery bank that's pretty nice. So this is the P5 by Blitzwolf. It's a 15,600 milliamp hour battery. It has a really rugged aluminum body, which makes it a perfect travel item. So it has two USB ports and you can easily charge your phone a couple of times with that battery. It can also power the two Amaron lights I just talked about earlier. So it's really a perfect light setup on the go and you won't be left in the dark. So if you're interested, I'll have links to this battery bank in the description down below. And it's actually really awesome as it supports Quick Charge 3.0. It also has an LED indicator to know how much juice you have left. And it's really great for tablets and smartphones, which are actually pretty useful when filming, whether you have your script on it or if you actually use it to film. So next item on the list is the Rode Video Micro, which is a $60 microphone. So if you didn't know, audio is actually key for a great video. Crappy video can pass, but your watchers are aren't likely to tolerate crappy audio. So the mic actually comes with a dead cat and a shock mount, so it's pretty versatile and it's actually pretty cheap for the great audio quality you get out of it. It's actually not that far from the Video Mic Pro, however, this one will perform a bit better in uncontrolled environment. So it's an omnidirectional mic, it has a stereo plug, but it sends a mono signal. The only thing you've got to make sure is that your camera has a mic jack and it can also work with smartphones using an adapter that Rode sells separately. And now just so you can compare the audio quality, I'll have two short clips, one with the Rode Video Micro and one with my camera's built-in mic. So this is a sound test using my camera's built-in mic and as you can tell, the room I'm in has a lot of echo and hopefully you will be able to tell the difference between the Rode Video Micro and my camera's built-in mic. So this is a test using the Rode Video Micro and as you can hear, the room I'm in has a lot of echo and hopefully you will be able to tell the difference between the Rode Video Micro and my camera's built-in microphone. So next item on the list is the Manfrotto Pixie tripod. So this one costs about $25 and you've probably already seen this one as many people use it and recommend it. And it's quite normal as it's really versatile. So it's strong enough for most small cameras and accessories. There's a built-in ball head that can be moved easily with a button. And it's actually really great on tables. It has a really small form factor, so it's really great on the go as well. And I will probably actually buy another one soon as it's quite useful. So next items on the list are these mini quick release plates. So these sell for about $15 and they're really great to easily remove various accessories that you might have. They use the standard quarter inch tread all cameras and tripods use. And I got like four or five of these, I guess. I've got one for my portable recorder, one for my phone holder, one for an arm that I use for my mic and one to connect my mic to it. And it's actually way easier than screwing and unscrewing stuff around. And it's actually much more secure than your typical shoe mount that doesn't have a proper locking mechanism. And they might be a bit loose at first, so I installed some thin foam tape in them and now they're perfect. And I would actually recommend you do so if you buy a few of these. Next item on the list is a phone holder. So this one is about five bucks and it's actually really useful if you film with your phone. And it can also be used with the aperture light that I talked about earlier. 
and you can install it on the Manfrotto Pixie as well. So overall, it's pretty useful. There's the standard quarter inch thread to mount it pretty much anywhere. And it can be actually pretty useful if you have your script on your phone so that you can liberate your hands. So now last items on the list are these Arc Swiss quick release systems. So these sell for various prices depending on the quality of the plates and adapters but I'll have a few links down below if you're interested. So their biggest advantage is that they're smaller than the QR plates found on most tripods, like this huge Manfrotto one that comes with my tripod. They can also stay on your camera all the time without being in the way. There's actually a better chance that it won't block the battery door and it should not be thicker than your camera's body if you pick the right plate. They're actually really easy to mount and they're actually quite cheap compared to other quick release systems and they can be used on larger accessories too, like this slider that I can install on my tripod. So that's pretty much it. I've been filming way before I've had this channel, so I have a lot of other tips in mind and I could easily make a part two. So let me know if you'd be interested in that. Now, otherwise, hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you liked the video if you did. And if not, let me know what I should change. Now, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't already and I'll see you in the next video.